subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome back. Tonight we are reviewing for our Unit 9 test, which consists of a bunch of problems that are in the style of questions that you can expect to see on either the CLEP College Algebra or the TSI test. So the majority of these will be multiple choice, and you can expect the test to be very similar to this review. I really just want you to master these problems just like we've done on our other test prep units. We we'll just kind of look at specific examples of problems that are relevant to units that we have just recently studied. So on tonight's unit nine test review, we're gonna be looking at questions that have to do with exponents and logarithms. These are the last two units that we studied. And so it seems, uh, yeah, like a good time to start prepping for these college uh, placement exams. So let's look at number one of the following, which is greatest. Now you can kind of play with your exponent rules to get an answer here, but honestly, I think the easiest way to do this one is just to type all of these in and just compare what they equal. So as long as you type them in exactly how they look um, in, uh, in the answer choices, we should get the right answer here. So let's see, uh, why is this not turning on? Uh, looks like my calculator is broken. Let me just cl close it out. Do the old turn it off, turn it back on trick. Nine times out of 10 when one of my parents is asking me for technology advice, that's usually it. Just turn it off, turn it back on, usually works. And look at that, it worked here too. Okay, anyway, uh, so you know, let's just start typing all these in and making a note of what they equal, and then we'll pick the biggest one. So the first one's two to the fourth cubed, which should be the same thing as, oops. Yeah, definitely wanna make it look exactly like it looks here. Um, this is gonna be the same thing as saying two to the power of 12, because when you raise a power to a power, you multiply the powers, and we get 4,096. So big, not too big. I bet we, I bet, you know, if I was guessing, this is not gonna be our final answer. Because it's asking which one's the biggest one, and I think we can get bigger than this. Uh, but let's see here. So yeah, that was two to the 12th. Okay, maybe I'll make a note here also, like when you raise a power to a power, you, you uh, multiply the power, so this is equal to two, or here, I'll just, I'll just put it over here, um, equal to the two to the 12th. Now, you don't have to know that, but if you understand that, you, it might make the whole thing go a lot faster. All right, so letter B, let's go ahead and type that one in. We've got two to the power of four cubed. And now four cubed, four squared is 16, or cubed is 64. So what this really is, is two to the 64th power. So this is gonna be a, just kind of a crazy large number here. And, you know, don't get thrown off by the fact this says 1.8, because really what this is give this number so big that it has to give it to you in scientific notation. And this is how the calculator shows scientific notation. And so we get about, um, well, first of all, yeah, it's two to the 64th. So it's obviously gonna be bigger than the last one. But yeah, we get about 1.8 um, times 10 to the power of 19. So yeah, when you see this E here, what that really means is times 10 to that power. I don't know why they didn't just program it to say times 10, why they went with the E. I mean, they could have cut off a couple of these decimals here. Whoever's working over at Texas Instruments, come on, give us some proper scientific notation. Enough with this E nonsense. It's just confusing, nobody likes it, and it's 2024. I don't even know why we're using these calculators anyway, and I'll get off my little soapbox here. But, um, but yeah, that's what it is. Letter C, let's type that out. Now this is gonna be four squared cubed. So this is gonna be kind of like A where we multiply the powers if you're just kind of following along with the exponent properties. And so this is gonna be four to the sixth. Not too big, but if we write this as, if we write four as two squared and raise that to the sixth power, two times six is gonna be 12. So this is like two to the 12th, okay? So look at that, and we're probably gonna get the same answer here unless I just, mess something up there. But either way, I'm gonna type this in exactly how it looks. Four squared uh, to the power of three. And yep, it is the same, 4,096. Uh, which we can recognize just by converting this to a power of two. All right, three to the fourth squared is gonna be the same thing as three to the eighth. 
Okay, we, uh, we're not going to be able to write 3 as a power of 2, so it's going to be a little hard to compare here. But just remember that exponentiation grows really fast. So changing this to a 3, um, like if we compare 2 to the 8th to 3 to the 8th, 3 it's going to be way bigger um, because of how fast exponentiation grows. So let's just type this in, uh, get an idea of what, what our number is. It's probably going to be pretty big, but I'm guessing not as big as letter C. Oh, not three to the fourth. That's what I get for talking while I type. No, no talking and typing at the same time here. Um, oh, I guess, you know, I said we would type it in as it looked. So let me just go ahead and type that in. So you can see that it is the same. Yeah, we get 6,561. So big, but not crazy. Okay. Um, that lead, leads us to our last one. Uh, just kind of clean this up a little bit, making this a little easier to read, hopefully. Um, four to the power of two cubed. Now two cubed is eight, which means this is gonna be equal to four to the eighth power. Now four is the same thing as two squared and two times eight is 16, so this really should be equal to two to the 16th, and that gives you some perspective for where this is gonna fall. It's gonna be bigger than 4,000, uh, but uh, probably, well, definitely significantly smaller than uh, what we got for B. This is a monster number. This has 19 digits before you hit the decimal, or I guess 20, including the one, so that's, that's gonna be huge. Uh, but anyway, we got four to the power of two cubed, which, you know that's eight, that's great. But, you know, I don't wanna leave, we don't wanna get this wrong just because we're a little too confident on our, on our arithmetic. Okay, so we get 65,536, 65,536, which, yeah, that is gonna be in between A and B, but we're looking for the greatest number so we can see pretty clearly that this is gonna be B. So again, if you're good with your exponent properties, you might be able to figure it out without using a calculator, but you get to use a calculator on the CLEP anyway, so there's really no reason not to just throw all these in and see which one's bigger. I guess the only thing that might hold you back is if you get thrown off um, by getting this whole E thing. Again, I don't know why it's programmed like this. It's probably, I'm sure there's some reason back when they program these back in like the 80s or something where <laughs> they couldn't couldn't figure out how to write times 10. I don't know. It seems like it'd be a pretty simple ch switch here. I mean, just cut off some of these decimals. Just come on. All right, anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, if you don't know that, you, you could potentially get this wrong thinking this is just 1.8 um, with some letters in it. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so our answer is going to be B. Okay, number two, another exponent property problem. So um, here we're just multiplying straight across. And so whenever you multiply two powers with the same base, you add the exponent. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna rearrange these terms so that they are in um, not only alphabetical order, but also so the like terms are grouped. So I'm gonna say r squared times r to the two thirds times t to the one half times t to the negative 3 halves. Okay, so we do need to add these exponents together. That's that product property. Um, so 2 plus 2 thirds. Well, 2 is the same thing as 6 thirds. And 6 plus 2 is 8, so this is going to be to the 8 thirds power. And for the t, we've got 1 half minus 3 halves. So 1 minus 3. That's gonna be uh, uh, that's gonna be negative two. So negative two over two is gonna be negative one. So here's another problem where we end up with a negative exponent, and we can't leave it like that. We're not allowed to. Um, just one of the rules of simplifying states that we're not supposed to have any negative exponents. So we're gonna use that negative exponent property and rewrite this uh, so that it has a positive exponent. And the way to do that is just to throw that term in the denominator and change the exponent to be positive. You don't need the one here. 
uh, just trying to showcase that, you know, like if this was negative three, this would be a three down here. This number needs to be the positive version of whatever that is. And so, yeah, here's our answer. Um, so let's look at our answer choices, see if we can find it. Uh, da, 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 da. I do not, oh, no, no, it's E. Okay, I see it. It's right here. So, yeah, we get E. All right, so, yeah, this one would be E. Number three. All right, so number three says uh, a colony of bacteria starts with three bacteria at noon. If the colony of bacteria doubles every 30 minutes, how many bacteria will be present at 3 p.m. the same day? Uh, here we kind of want to set up an exponential function here. Um, this is going to be a situation where we do have an exponential function, which when you write an exponential function, it takes this form typically. Um, but for this one, it says that it, so it says it doubles, so our, our multiplier is going to be two. We started with three bacteria. So my A value is going to be um, three. But it says it doubles every 30 minutes. Okay, so it's not going to double every minute. It's going to double every 30 minutes. So it's going to take 30 of these to actually to actually complete the doubling after 30 minutes. So if X represents the number of minutes, if X is 30, 30 divided by 30 is one and we have one doubling. So this is gonna be our setup. Um, it says, how many bacteria will be present at 3 p.m. on the same day? So that is, uh, when did we start? Noon, so that's three hours later. Um, so what we really want is three times 60, what would that be? Uh, 180 minutes. So we can see it's gonna double. Um, uh, let's see, if it's doubling every 30 minutes, then it should double six times. And so that's why this reduces to six. Okay, so we could just type this in our calculator. And you can't see anything I'm writing over here. That is unfortunate. I uh, just realized that. So let me move the calculator over so you can see everything I'm writing. Um, and so, yeah, here we're going to just type it in. And my calculator died again. Not sure why it keeps doing that, but no big deal. Yeah. Okay, three times two to the sixth. We have 192 bacteria. Now there's another way you could approach this problem. Um, we have our answer already, so you can skip to the next problem if you just if you understood what we're doing here. But if you don't want to have to deal with equations and knowing how to set up an exponential equation and all that, you could just construct a table. Okay, so if we do time and bacteria and just like count in increments of, let's say, 30 minutes, this should be pretty easy to come up with our answer. So like at noon, there were three bacteria, All right? Let's go ahead and underline these, make this look a little bit more like a table. Okay, so at 12.30, 30 minutes later, it doubles and we have six. And then at one o'clock, it doubles again, so we have 12. And then at 1.30, it doubles again, and we have 24. At 2 o'clock, doubles again, and we get 48. And then 2.30, doubles again to get 96. And then finally at 3 o'clock, doubles one last time to get 192. So, you know, if, if, the, if the equations are throwing you off and it's just like too much to remember where everything goes and how to set it up correctly, this is a problem that you don't really need the formula for. You can really just construct a table of values, keep track of how many bacteria there are, um, and just go in increments uh, as far as the doubling is concerned. This one doubles every 30 minutes, so just count by 30 minutes to keep the arithmetic easy, and you can do this all pretty much in your head. And you know, in the calculator, you could just write times two, times two, times two, times two to make sure you don't get these numbers wrong. Um, but yeah, either way you want to work this out, we still get 192. All right. Number four, 
what is the solution to this equation? So this is one where we can rewrite 27 as a power of 3. So 3 to the 2x equals 3 cubed. Okay, 3 cubed is 27. And we have what's called the one-to-one -one property that says that if we have two equal powers with the same base, then we can drop the bases and set the exponents equal to each other. So 2x equals 3. And so dividing both sides by 2 gives me 3 over 2. It, you know, there is another way you could work this out, but this this way is so easy. Like, there, I mean, there's literally ha like what one, two, three steps. It's not very difficult. There's no, you don't have to know how to set up an equation or anything. You just have to recognize that 27 is a power of three. Now, the other way you could work this out, which if you're just kind of stuck on a problem like this, and really this strategy works for any problem where it's just like a solve for x kind of problem is just to take the answer choices and just plug them in and use your calculator to uh, check to see if you're getting it right. So like you could plug in two thirds into X and see if that equals 27. And if that doesn't work, which it won't, uh, try eight, three to the 16th power. Does that equal 27? No. Plug in two, okay, three to the fourth. Is that 27? And you can basically keep going and eventually you're gonna get D is correct. So if you don't know how to solve this, at least try this little strategy of plugging in the answer choices. Number five says the population of a certain city was 10,200 on January 1st, 2012. If the population increases by 10% per year for the next two years, which of the following best approximates the population of the city on January 1st, 2014? So here we are kind of just setting up that exponential function. So at, at the end of the day, it is best that you know how to set this up. The equation is not super complex. Um, just know that this number A is going to be your initial amount. B is your multiplier. And then depending on what's happening in the problem, typically this is just years, but there might be more to it. Uh, like if it doesn't, let's say, double every year or something like that. But let's just see what this says. It says uh, it started off with... Uh, 10,200 people, so we'll make that our initial value. It increases by 10% per year for the next two years. Okay, so the way that we set this up is we're going to have 100% plus the 10%. And so if I add those together, 1 plus 0.1, it's going to be just 1.1. And uh, yeah, there you go. This is our function. It says what which of the following best approximates the population of the city in 2014, which is two years after 2012. So yeah, basically what we want is the value of this function when X is two. And uh, yeah, that's what we're looking for. We don't even have to evaluate this one. We're just looking for the expression right here. And do we see that one? Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Yep, right here, D, I'm sorry, E. All right, there's number five. Let's take a look at number six. Number six says if log base four of y plus six uh, equals three, what's the value of y? So we now gotta know how to solve a logarithmic equation here. So let me just go ahead and retype this out. We got log base four. I'm gonna get this little base symbol. There we go, four of y plus six equals three. So the way to solve this is using something called the inverse property, where we are going to invert this equation and rewrite it as an exponential function. So uh, it is good to know that logarithmic functions and exponential functions are inverses. Uh, they invert each other. So you can rewrite a logarithmic equation as an exponent. And the way we do that is whatever's in the parentheses, y plus six, in this case, is gonna equal the base, which in this case is four, raised to this exponent. So an, a logarithm is an exponent, okay? Whatever the logarithm equals, that is the exponent. The base is the base in both cases, and then whatever's inside the parentheses, that is the power. So now we can just go through, and I mean, this just real quickly turned into a linear equation, and so we can solve it like that. 
Uh, let's see, four cubed, four times four is 16, times four is 64. So if we subtract six from both sides, we should get uh, 58. And we do see that uh, it's answer choice C. Number seven, it says evaluate the following. Oh, there we go. Uh, log base two of root eight minus log base three of root three. So we need to evaluate these separately. Um, now, I'm gonna show you how to do this by hand, but I also wanna show you how to do this in the calculator. Let me start with the calculator, because I want you to, I mean, this one is a little bit more complicated than I think it's really worth trying to do by hand. I'm still gonna show you how to do it, but let me show you an easier way. I always like to you know, do, do whatever's easiest here. Now, in order to put this in the calculator, uh, since you get a scientific calculator on the CLEP, you can't just throw this in and hope for an answer because the calculator you're gonna get is gonna be similar to most scientific calculators in that you cannot put in a custom base. The only logarithms you have at your disposal are the log, which is base 10, or natural log, which is base E. But there's good, some good news here. And that is we are allowed to change the base to be whatever we want using something called the change of base formula. And basically what that says is if you have um, log of any base, I'll just call it base B, of, we'll just call it X, okay, so something like this, we can change the base to be whatever we want. And for our purposes, we just want to change it to be the base 10, so we can type the log button in the calculator. It's going to be log x divided by log b. So we can rearrange this and, and kind of retype this so that we can actually put this in the calculator as log of the square root of 8, if it'll let me do a square root button. For some reason, it does not want me to do that. There we go, divided by log two. Minus log of root three divided by log three. And looky there, now we can type this in the calculator. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start typing away here. Start with the fraction. We got log of the square root of eight over log of two minus, oh, said minus, type to plus, minus uh, log of root three divided by log of three. And we get one, look at that. Uh, it's a pretty good indication we got it right if we get a nice clean number like that. And that doesn't mean we're right, but I'm pretty sure we are. So that's gonna be our answer for this one. But let me just briefly show you how you would work this without a calculator. Um, again, I would definitely recommend just going ahead and using the calculator. Uh, but if you're just you know curious how you would do it without it, here's how you would do it. So eight is a power of two. And when you take the square root of something, it's like taking the one half power to it. So I'm gonna rewrite this as log Uh, base 2, instead of typing this as root 8, first I'll just write it as 8 to the 1 half power. Okay? And I'll do the same thing for the next one. Okay, minus log base 3 of 3 to the 1 half power. All right, now using our power property, we can bring this exponent down to be a coefficient of each log. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and say that this is going to be 1 half times log base 2 of 8 minus one half times log base three of three. Now I'm gonna evaluate uh, these two logarithms. And when you evaluate a logarithm, the question you should be asking yourself is, like in this first case, what power do I need to raise two to to get to eight? In other words, two to what power is eight? Now, hopefully that doesn't take you too long to figure out that two cubed is eight. 
So log base two of eight equals three. So this is like one half times three minus one half times. And then here, if we're trying to um, figure out three to what power is three, that's just gonna be one. Three of the first power is one. So then we get three times a half, which is three halves. And we get one times a half, which is one half. And three halves minus one half is one. So we end up with the same answer. So you kind of have two choices here. One is to know the change of base formula and just use it and use the calculator. Or if you're pretty good with your logarithm properties, you can get away without using the calculator. But if it's me taking the test, 10 times out of 10, I'm gonna use the calculator, especially if I have the ability to. All right, let's move on to number eight. Number eight says if log base x is 11, I'm sorry, if log base x of 11 is two, what is the value of x? So this is another one that we wanna use that inverse property that we used back on number six where we rewrite the logarithm as an exponential equation. So here we have log base x of 11 equals two. And if I rewrite this as an exponential equation, I'm gonna get 11 equals, right? This is what uh, the power is. And then the base is x and the, power, uh, the exponent's two. So if I'm solving for x, I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. Now, typically you would say plus or minus the square root of 11, but the base of a logarithm has to be positive, so we are going to ignore the negative root 11 for this problem. It's gonna be considered an extraneous solution because it's not inside the domain of this function. So we're just gonna keep the root 11, and well, that's it. Just, that, that's your answer. Number nine says, what is the value of f of zero for this function? And just look at this function. It is just a huge disaster. There, uh, there's a logarithm, there's an exponential, you got two binomials being multiplied. But I think what they're really trying to do here is just make sure you understand function notation because this problem is actually really easy. It's asking for f of zero. And so basically all you have to do is just plug in zero for x. You might be thinking like, that's too easy. Like, is that really it? Plug in zero for x? Yep, that's it. <laughs> All we gotta do is just substitute zero everywhere where we see x here. So here, here, here. One other thing I found kind of interesting, um, and I, this was on, it wasn't just this problem. I saw it on a couple other problems, but on the, um, the study guide for the college board, or uh, for the, uh, sorry, the CLEP college algebra test, any time they did a base 10 logarithm, they went out of their way to write the base 10, which is not very conventional. Usually if it's base 10, you're not gonna see this written here. You would just see log 10. Um, so I just, I don't know. I found that kind of interesting that they wrote that there when typically you do not see it there. I don't know if they're just really trying to emphasize that and they don't want you to get it wrong in case you don't know what it is. Um, but yeah, so that was, that, that's just kind of weird. So I'm not even gonna write it there just because that's not how we usually write it. I'm just gonna write log 10 plus nine to the zeroth power plus zero minus two, which is negative two, times zero minus one. And we're just gonna type all this in the calculator. Okay, we probably don't even need to. Yeah, I mean, well, if you understand your logarithms, then this is actually really easy without a calculator. I would probably advise just typing this into your calculator. But uh, gosh, this one's just so easy to do. T 10 to the first power is 10, so that's just one. Anything to the zeroth power is one. And then we've got negative two times negative one, so plus negative two times negative one. Well, this is just gonna be positive two, so we get one plus one plus two, which is four. So look at that, we really didn't even need a calculator, but if you have the ability to use one and you don't want to just be caught off guard, you can just type this in. You should still get four. Number 10 it says if 20 equals three of the X, which of the following expresses X as a base 10 log. So here's another one. Yeah, look at this. All the answer choices have the base 10 written. That's so weird and unconventional. It really surprises me that College Board would write it like that. Um, I, I, I couldn't tell you why. Maybe they're just trying to avoid any ambiguity and arguments about the test. I, I don't know, but this is definitely, you know, at least in the United States, we don't really see this written this way. I know in other countries, sometimes they like 
um, use base 10 as their natural logarithm and, and, and their common logarithm they use with the E. I, but, you know, hey, we're, we're in the United States and our common log is base 10. I don't know. It's just the convention that we use. So sort of weird, but whatever. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this. 20 equals 3 to the x. Uh, we want to solve this by using, again, that inverse property. But what's different between this one and uh, like 8 or 6 is that we're going the other way. So in the other problems, we went from logarithmic equation to an exponential one. Here we're going from an exponential equation to a logarithmic one. So x equals log base 3. I can throw it in there, log base 3 of 20. And then here we want to use the change of base formula, which we talked about back on problem, what was that, 7. Okay, I'm just going to actually copy this change of base formula so I don't have to rewrite it. Um, there we go. And so basically we want to change this uh, into a base 10 logarithm. Okay, so I'm going to write this as x equals log of 20 divided by log of 3. You can write the base 10 if you want, but typically it's just implied if you don't see an actual 10 written there. Um, so yeah, so let's see what our options are. Do we have one like this? Yep, here we go. Choice E. I feel like we're getting a lot of E's. Don't count on that, but that's, you know, it's kind of weird. And I didn't put a little space for my answer here. What's up with that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oops, typo. Okay, there we go. Yeah, let's see. Make my own little space. All right, number 11. So with number 11 here, we are trying to simplify the expression. And I'll start by getting rid of this to the negative 1 power. So anytime you raise a fraction to a negative power, you can rewrite it as a positive power. Uh, in this case of just 1, if you flip the fraction. So this would be y to the 5th divided by x cubed, I'm sorry, x to the negative 3rd times y. Um, all of the, if this were any number other than negative 1, like if it was negative 5 or something like that, then you would still have parentheses around here, and it would be raised to the 5th power uh, if that was negative 5. But since it's negative 1, it's just to the 1st power, and when we raise something to the 1st power, uh, it doesn't do anything, so we don't need these parentheses anymore. The next thing I'm going to take care of is this negative 3 power. Okay, now, if the, if the negative power is on the outside of the parentheses, you flip the whole fraction. But if it's on just a single term like this, then you can just move that one term to the other side of the fraction. So you're just reciprocating the one term rather than the whole fraction. So this will equal x to the positive third power times y to the fifth all over y. And then we have y to the fifth divided by a single y. Uh, whenever you divide two powers with the same base, you subtract the exponents. So 5 minus 1 would just be 4. And so our final answer here is going to be x cubed times y to the fourth. And da, 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 da. Ugh. you got a typo here. None of these, <laughs> none of these answer choices are. Wait a minute. Wait one minute. Okay. Looks like I, I got a little copy-paste happier. I'm not sure exactly what happened here. But let's change, um, let's change all the y's to be to the fourth. Yeah, I don't know. None of these are right. <laughs> you know what we're going to do here? We're going to say e is uh, <laughs> um, x cubed times y to the fourth. Yeah, I don't know exactly what happened there. Let me just make sure, just at a glance here, I didn't miss anything. You know, I think this all looks good. It, you know what it probably happened is I probably just copied over some answer choices and forgot to change the numbers. Um, so we'll just say the answer is here is E. Don't. Okay. Number 12. Under ideal conditions, the population of a certain species doubles every nine years. If the population started with 100 individuals, which of the following expressions gives the population of the species t years after the population started, assuming that the population has been living under ideal conditions? So this is one of those exponential function equations, a times b to the x. 
Um, here the initial population was 100 and it says it doubles every nine years. If it doubled every year, it would just be two to the X. But since it takes nine years to double, we're gonna divide that X by nine. So like if X was nine, nine years, nine divided by nine would be one. And so we would double one time. If we looked over the course of 18 years, 18 divided by nine would be two. And so we would be doubling twice. So that's why we have to have this divide by nine there. And so our answer is B. Number 13 is a compound interest problem and they give us the formula. So let's just dig through the, uh, the, the actual question here and see if we can uh, construct an equation to come up with our answer. So uh, it says he, uh, Ishan invested $8,400. So that's our initial amount. That's gonna be our principal into an account that earns 7% interest. That's gonna be the rate. How much will be in the account after four years? Okay, so four years, that's gonna be our time. Um, if the account is compounded monthly. So if it's compounded monthly, that tells us that the N value is 12 because interest is being compounded um, 12 times in a year. If it's compounded monthly, once a month, 12 months, so 12 times per year. So that's, good. Well, that's the number we're gonna put in the N. And then the amount, the less just going to be our answer. So we're going to put all this in the calculator and hopefully get our, our answer. So the amount is going to equal the principal, which is $8,400 times 1 plus the rate. Now be careful here. The rate does need to be as a decimal, so 0 0.07 divided by 12 because it's being compounded monthly to the rate to, uh, to the power of 12 times 4 for 4 years. So let's go ahead and throw all this into the calculator. Got 8,400. Times one plus. 0 0.07 divided by 12 raised to the power of 48, but I'm just gonna be on the safe side and just type 12 times four. And there we go. So we get about $11,105.25. So our answer here is E, uh, not E, D. Again, looks like I left off a little little place for me to put my answer. Oops. Gosh, typos galore on this one, huh? Uh, not sure why. Okay, well, that's number 13. Let's take a look at number 14. Looks like we only got two problems left here, and they're both about exponent properties. So n number 14 is going to use the product property that says when you multiply two powers with the same base, you add the exponent. So this will be x to the power of 6 plus 5. 6 plus 5 is 11, so our answer is x to the 11th. Uh, we see that right here, answer choice A. And lastly, number 15. First, we're going to raise all of these terms to the third power. So that's, I'm going to just try to do one step at a time here. So we get 3 cubed times x squared cubed times y cubed cubed. Anytime you raise a power to a power, you do multiply the powers. So that's what I'm going to do on the next step here. Ah, there we go. Is I'm going to simplify this by multiplying these powers and also do this little arithmetic here. So 3 cubed, 3 times 3 is 9, times 1 more 3 is going to be 27. And then we have times x to the sixth power, times y to the three times three is ninth power. And that's it. That's going to be our answer for number 15. Let's look for it right here, D.
All right. Well, that's about it for this review. Thanks for hanging in there. I know this has been a long video, but um, hopefully you understand how to work out all these problems and you can expect the test to be very similar. Um, as always, please let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to help you all out. Uh, but otherwise, y'all have a great evening and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.